beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone, so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You are blessed and stay blessed. He encouraged everyone when he went to preach in Kenya. He challenged them to disappoint the great. Because according to Dr. Miles, the richest place in the earth is not the gold mine of South Africa, the oil wells in Nigeria and Iraq and the Middle East, but graveyards where potentials have gone unused. Books that would have changed destinies. Anointings that would have liberated nations. And miles before his death and all through his lifetime it became his conviction and he said disappoint the great disappoint the great and although it was a tragic event but he had already prepared to cheat death long before the bible says so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom can we rise in one minute and pray for cairo and carissa two children he left behind, well-trained, well-schooled, and pray for the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Comfort them, O oh God. Indeed, the world has felt the exiting of a general, generals in the faith. These are men that Hebrews 11 says the earth is not worthy of. They came with ideologies that conquered this system. They brought Babylon to his knees. They were prosperous from the earthly point of view. They were successful and yet they were relevant. Pivotal to the, the dispensational mandate of the spirit for our time. They cheated death. They reigned with life. These are men who even in the grave speak louder than those who are alive. Bless them. Lord, we thank you for giving the earth the gift of Dr. Miles and Ruth and Dr. Richard Pinder and all the membership of the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. We thank you because they took the banner of leadership and the revelation of the kingdom life to the nations. They fought the fight. They ran the race. They poured their lives like drink offerings. We are epistles and testaments and seals of their apostleships lord we thank you lord we pray that you comfort the ministry comfort the membership we pray the entire nation of bahamas in the name of jesus we pray that you will bless them all the sons and the daughters and men and women of god that he left behind i pray that they will pick up that baton and run in the name of the lord jesus christ I pray that there will be no discouragement. And Lord, through his life, give us wisdom. That we who are alive will make the most of our life here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I want 
to appreciate um, all those who made last week's service a good time. Bravo for God is good. God is powerful. His hands were powerful. God bless you. May the Lord increase all of us together in the name of Jesus. God is taking us far. And as always, if we submit to the dealings of the Spirit, the Bible says, surely God is at work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want us to consider a very important subject. It's amazing to see that this is the 11th month of the year. And um, a lot has happened in our nation. A lot has happened in our lives. 2014 has really been um, an amazing year for many. It's been a tragic year. And, um, but in all of these things, before God, I want to just share with us something that I consider is very foundational at this point of our lives. I want to share tonight on the power of hope. Very simple message, but it will bless you. The power of hope. Job chapter 6, verse 11. When we look around our world today, and um, we see the complexities of, of, of living in today's world, ranging from terrorism, to um, corruption, and all kinds of insecurity, death, poverty, and all of these vices that have plagued our nation and our life. And here in Nigeria, we've had our toll of a share of pain. Family members have lost loved ones, and a lot has happened in our lives. Many of us have um, had our expectations dashed at one point or the other. And it's important that we understand the concept of hope. And tonight, I know you will be blessed. When the Lord laid this in my heart, I knew that God was going to speak to us and transform our lives. Job chapter 6, verse 11. Now, when you study theologically the book of Job, um, there's a lot of controversy about the writer of the book of Job and the time the dispensation with which the book was written. Because um, contextually, the book of Job seems to predate the law and all of that. We see activities in the book of Job that happened before the law was given. So we know that um, that must have existed in a dispensation that uh, most fitting would be in between the book of Genesis, somewhere around there. And theologians generally agree that the book of Job is somewhere there. The writer of the book of Job is unknown because of the character of that book. Uh, it is generally agreed that if you take someone who is either not of human origin or who has sustained an intelligence that is out of this world to have communicated and articulated the book of Job very, very accurately because the book of Job begins telling us about a man, a wealthy man who feared God and eschewed evil. And then the Bible tells us something strange. It gives us the picture of a meeting that was held in the realms of the heavens where Satan also came and uh, discussions were made about this man called Job. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, yes, I have considered him and all of that. But does he serve you just for nothing? You have blessed him. Everything he has touched has prospered. And he said, permit me to take all that you have given him and see if he will not curse you to your face. And whilst that is happening, Job was on the earth realm, not knowing that there was a deliberation that was going on. So it's a very interesting book because uh, it's one book that tries to answer the question of why bad things happen to good people. Have you heard that kind of question? <laughs> Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do Christians die? Why, why do we have terrorists coming through a church or meeting and bombing? Why? What is 
the contemplation. What is the answer? There are so many things that happen in our world that creates a lot of question. No wonder we have people who were once Christians and then as a result of these unanswered questions, they become atheists or they turn and begin to mock God and do all kinds of things. So Job was that man. In one day, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that Job lost his sons, he lost his daughters, he lost his houses, he was into real estate, he was into agriculture, he lost his business, he lost everything. The only thing that Job had was himself, his health, and his wife. Within a span of a few hours, men kept coming to bring reports. I was standing and there were hailstones and this and that happened. All your children are dead. I'm the only one who is alive to come and testify. While he was trying to manage the psychology that comes, the shock, another news comes. This and that was happening and your cattle and everything. And, the, and at the end of Job's life, uh, after that news, Job gave glory to God. And that was the end of it. And then, you would think that that would be the end of it. Another meeting of hell again. And this time around, Satan comes and God is making boast with Job. And Satan says, well, a man can give anything but his health, his life. Permit me to touch his body and see what happens. And the Lord said, fine. Now, that in itself is a big subject of controversy. Why the Lord would permit the devil to go and perfect a man. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, Job began to have soil, uh, uh, boils all over his body. And within a short time, that great celebrity, that great man was reduced to ashes. He sat upon ashes and the Bible says dogs would come and lick his sores. He became a subject of embarrassment. Everybody in the city carried their opinion about him. And then the Bible tells us that three men came, really four. And they came and sat together. When they saw Job's predicaments, they were shocked. And for seven days, they could not talk. After seven days, they began to analyze. They stretched their intellect from border to border. Searching what principles of life might have been violated to be responsible for this man's predicament. Are you following me now? And at the end of it, they said, Job, all we can find is that you're a sinner. Job said, be careful. Don't bring a curse upon yourself. And there was a little boy who sat. Early, he said, I wanted to speak, but I was afraid because he was sleeping. He said, this matter is not just the issue of experience. There is a spirit in the man. We need the Holy Ghost to help us to be able to analyze what would have been the situation. And after all of those conversations, Job's wife looked at him and said, Mr. Man, you know I've been here. We had all these children with you. I've been a faithful wife. Your situation is pathetic. I pity you. So here is the solution. My recommendation to this situation is that you curse God and die. And Job said, why do you speak like one of these foolish men? Hallelujah. And then a lot of things transpired. At a point, Job's humanity, this is the part, that, that I want you to get. Job, because you see, Job was a human being. And remember, I did a teaching one time on the four living creatures. How that there are four faces of creatures, the throne. The first is the face of a lion. Hallelujah. And it depicts the believer as a king, as royalty, because we are a reflection of God. So that is the dimension of God that we must permit to be at work in our lives. Mighty king. You rule and you reign. And then the face of a cow. And it symbolizes the servanthood of God. Expressed in the person of Jesus. Which should be a template for our own lives. How that is not enough just to be a boss and a king. But we must also be servants. Hallelujah. And then the third face is the face of a man. Which represents our humanity. And that means no matter how mighty we are. Times will come in our lives when our humanities will speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that Jesus was hungry. And he went to the farm to go and get something. In fact, at a point he came to see a fig tree. And then he didn't find food. We see the humanity of Jesus. He wept at funerals. Uh, 
he was grieved when he saw men doing a lot of things, perverting the temple. There was nothing embarrassing about his humanity. And at times in our lives, sometimes we tend to choke ourselves by refusing to allow our humanities to speak. Let me just stop by to say it's okay to cry. There are times that even great men cry. It's not a symbol of weakness. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so Job's humanity, he was trying to hold it. He said, no, nobody should, should accuse God. God is faithful. Though he slay me, I will praise him. God is faithful. Don't accuse him. But as the situation became prolonged, the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary. Job began to ask questions. Lord, I have defended you in the midst of my pain. Is this how you are going to allow it? I would have gotten married if I compromised. But Lord, I'm getting to 35. What is happening? Every time people wanted to speak against you, I defended you. Even when I did not understand why my situation was like this. When my elder brother died, I defended you. A few months later, my younger brother died. I still defended you. And now someone is sick in my family and may die. Times can come in our lives, listen to me, when our humanities will probe God and will demand explanation. The power of hope. Are you getting blessed? So Job was alone and he began to summon God. In fact, he was angry. And he said, Lord, I'm a righteous man, you know, paraphrasing. I have walked blameless before you. What is all this thing? Why is I demand you? At a point in time, his aggression began to get stronger. And he said, Lord, come down. I, I schedule a meeting with you. If you are faithful and you are just, if your mercies are new every morning, except I have been lied to all my life, please show up. I need answers. There are times when people have locked themselves not to pray for power, not to pray for grace, but to say, Lord, can you tell me why this happened? Why was my father silent? I know that my father has never been part of those manipulating a lot of things. Why do I see ungodly people prospering? Yet for every time I serve you, I seem to pay a price for it. Hallelujah. And Job said this. Hmm. He said, what is my strength? This was a communication of a man's frustration. The humanity of Job was speaking. The Bible says he feared God. That means it was not intentional. There are times, brothers and sisters, that life can push you. And you will make some statements sometimes that you will have to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You will make statements. Someone sent me a text. I think he lost his mom. And um, he sent me the text two days before that time. He said, please pray. Something is wrong. Pray. I think a guy or a lady. I don't know exactly who. And then one morning I was on my way to travel. And then I got the text. He said, she's dead. He said, I will never trust God again. God is not to be trusted. Now you would easily say, no, don't say that. Sometimes the best way to help people is to keep quiet. If God is not angry at that statement, he should not be. The Bible says he knows that we are dust. Hallelujah. And so Job was frustrated and he spoke. He said, where is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? In other words, is it not better for me to die? What good is it now I'm alive? I can't do anything. I can't make money again. My reputation has been dashed to the ground. Everything I have lived for, I have spent my entire life for, is gone. And all I have is untold pain. I'm lying in the dust. And dogs, dogs who would not even come into my compound have now become my companions and they come to lick my sores. I have become a parable in my own city. And so Job was communicating his frustration. Something happened in chapter 14 of the same Job. Verse 7 and 9 please. Chapter 14. Verse 7 and 9 please. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah. I love the book of Job. Job 14, verse 7. Job 14, you can just turn to it. Are you ready? Verse 7. Hallelujah. Okay. I'd like us to read verse 7. Everyone. Was the same Job speaking. Hmm. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something powerful about, about, look at me. Do you know there is a technology that God has put in man. Every time, this is how it works. At first, we are always afraid. There are things we are afraid of. Are you getting my point? There is a way you interact with your fears such that you no longer fear again. So what would have made you cry yesterday, you will sit in the midst of it. And after challenging God and yelling at heaven, right at that point, a song of hope will arise. Sometimes the best way for God to bring us to a place of strength and victory is to expose us to our fears so that there is nothing else to fear. Hallelujah. Have you seen a man who has had accident and survived? When you shout and say, a number by is coming, he will still be moving. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. While everybody is panicking, he just says, man, I've seen too much. If he's dead, I would have died. Are you getting my point? There are men who have cheated the devil with their testimonies. They've gone through too much. When the ministry started, there are certain things that would have to be careful about. But right now, ah, there are things you go through in life. You no longer get afraid. Remember when some of you were afraid of carryover? In the name of Jesus, I bind. It will never happen. And you went to the board. You saw it once. You saw it twice. The third time, you just said, Lord, you are faithful. Now you just come and check. What's the CDPA? 2.87. I give you all the glory. And you are comforting somebody who said it dropped from 3.5 to 3.4. And you are saying, may God bless you. Take it easy. He said, can you imagine? God, why did you do this? And you're watching. A time comes when you've gone through too much pain. Your pain suddenly becomes a weapon. It no longer becomes a thing of embarrassment. You look down and it becomes your weapon of victory. And Job in chapter 6 made a statement. He said, I'm dying. What is all this? Heaven was silent. He went through the pain after insulting God, I'm sure he told himself, I'm sorry, told his wife, I'm sorry, and said, look. And then he said this. Hallelujah. He said, for there is hope for a true believer. Who is God speaking to now? There is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that's the part I like. He didn't say, if it be rooted out. He said, if it be cut down, because the root is still there. The miracle is not in what you have lost. It's in what you have left. He said, there is hope for a tree. God is speaking a powerful message to someone tonight. No matter what you have lost, God is the reason why you did not lose everything. Hmm. You lost your first class status, but you are still a student. You lost your family members, but you are still alive. They amputated one leg, but you are still breathing. He said, there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will what? It will sprout again. Ha! The Bible says, rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, for when I fall, when you are about to sit together and make a funeral, you will see me arise again. He said, rejoice not over me. They that have laughed at my family, they that have looked at them and said, at 31, nobody has gone to school. He said, rejoice not. There is hope for a tree. 
that there are expectations that you have and now it's November. The admission list came out and your name was not there. Yet in a dream, you kept seeing that you got the admission. He said there is hope for a change. The tragedy is that the tree can be cut down but not rooted up. He said, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Everybody say there is hope. What is hope? Let's define hope very quickly. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. That's what the Lord is doing in someone's life and someone's family tonight. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. One more time. Let's sing it as a prophecy for our lives and destinies. Come on now. You Definition number one. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. First definition. Let's hurry up. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a thing to happen. In other words, is that feeling, that expectancy you have that there's something I expect to happen in my life. And so you keep that feeling. You keep that expectation. It's called hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Number two. Hope is a firm assurance. A firm assurance. And a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. I'll take it again. Hope is a firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. Powerful definition. The assurance, firm assurance. So in the first definition, we see that hope is expectation. The second definition, faith is firm assurance. The certainty that you know that it will not end like this. Although for now, things may be unclear. Although for now, things may be unknown. But you have an assurance. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will happen. The firm assurance. Number three. I'll give you three definitions. Number three, hope is an optimistic attitude. Optimistic attitude of mind. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation. Keep writing. It's an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life. Now there are some key words that I want us to look at. When you talk about hope, the first thing you talk about is expectation. Say expectation. So I expect that certain things will happen. I may not know how they will happen. 
I may not know when they will happen. I don't even know where they will happen. But I know that they will happen. Number two, firm assurance. That certainty. That I know, that I know, that I know. That although it's been seven years and we've not been able to have a child, we know that we are going to die as parents. I know against all odds, against all medical reports, that I know, that I know, that I know, that I may be SS now, but one thing I know is that when I'll be going to be with the Lord, that genotype has changed. I may not know which miracle service will bring the miracle, but I have a firm assurance and then number three is an attitude of optimism. I keep my spirit high because I know that things will change. I may not see it. It may not look like it as at now. The job has not come. I've been a graduate for 10 years, no job. I've been a man of God for 20 years and there are just 20 members and I love God sincerely. The ministry is not growing. Finance is not coming. Influence is not increasing. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. I'm a lady. I've kept myself and I love the Lord. I told God I wanted to marry at 23. I'm 33. It's 10 years of waiting. Nothing has happened. He said, it's an attitude of optimism. Keeping your spirit high. Knowing you are not wasting your time. Very important. Why do we need hope? Very quickly. Why do we need hope? Why do we need to talk about the subject of hope? Why do we really need hope? Is it so important a subject to be talked about? Number one. I wrote here that in a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, Hope gives us the strength to continue. In a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. So the first reason why we need hope is because it supplies for us the strength. It gives us the staying power, the impetus to keep going, even when there is no human reason to keep moving. Hallelujah. Why should I keep serving the Lord when there are all kinds of things happening? Why should I keep hoping on God when believers seem to be dying around like chickens in our nation? Why should I keep being optimistic when it's been years and decades? There's not been any graduates in our family. In a world that is full of uncertainty, Hallelujah. Uncertainties. For instance, the, the, doc, the, the death of Dr. Miles Munro raised a lot of questions around people. You know, because people knew how very confident he was about the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. One of our brothers in the technical department called me this evening to tell me he lost his brother. He just got a report that he lost his brother. Our sister in the media last week, Selena, lost her mom. And the mom was coming from the church. She finished service on her way to go home and a bike carried her. She had an accident, had sustained some internal injuries. And um, by the next day, she gave up. And while she died, they were praying. I've seen a lot of people who minutes before people died, they were praying in tongues. In fact, some who died, died speaking in tongues or praying. Uncertainties. There are times when no matter how theologically sound you are, you will be faced with realities that you may not be able to answer. Why is this happening? Hallelujah. Imagine that that celebrity called Jesus. Imagine a man who conquered death. Will you ever think that he would die? After bringing dead people back to life. 
you would think even if they wanted to change it, it was based on that, that Peter took a knife to cut out his ear because he said, we don't know who we are talking to. And Jesus now gave him sight. He said, Jesus, I don't understand. What is going on here? Somebody tell me I'm dreaming. What is Jesus doing? Wake up. Are you sleeping? You are handing yourself, donating yourself to be killed. Jesus said, exactly that. And Peter said, come on now. So you fooled us all this while. Where is the jazz you've been using? So you are not really mighty. Ah, I knew it. Something in my spirit told me there was more to this man. And he ran away. But he did not know that there is hope for a king. The Bible likens men to priests. He said, he shall be like a priest. So he said, there is hope for a king. Jesus died, but he died for only 72 hours. When men were busy discussing his death, he was already alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't talk about my death when I'm already alive. We love talking about death. Two men in Emmaus were discussing the death, whereas the expiry time was only 72 hours. Did you know that this phase of your life that is full of stories is only a comma in the long span of the picture that is characterized by unending victory? It's been five years, but God has given you 80 years to prove to the devil he's alive. There is hope for you. A time came, Peter was locked in prison. Now he understood. I'm sure in prison, Peter will be saying, yeah, so this is what happened to Jesus. After doing great and mighty things, terrible things in righteousness, they, they watched the Holy Spirit come upon the church to begin a new dispensation. And now they locked him up. James was in the prison. They said, don't worry. We know James. James is a powerful man. And later they just had James has been beheaded. They said, you mean the knife entered? He died? He said, James is dead. All of a sudden there was panic. He said, my goodness, we thought the anointing was going to speak for James. There was silence. And now they caught Peter. I'm sure Peter concluded because the Bible does not record that when they came, they met him praying. He was sleeping. Peter said, well, if I need to leave, it's Christ. It's that day. Whatever happens, I'll go and meet Jesus in prison. But he did not know. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it is not your time, you remain in your time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An angel came. And the Bible says the chains just fell by themselves. And he let Peter out. Same thing with Paul. Paul was used to dying. He testified. He would die immediately. They leave. The spirit will just enter his body and inject us. And find somewhere and rest. And the job continues. Strange man. They would take reports that he's dead. And they would hear that he's in another city. Paul. Very strange man. To an extent that some men vowed that they will not eat. Have you read that in your Bible? They say we won't eat until this man dies to our supervision. We must make sure he's dead. I don't know what they did with their lives because Paul lived very long. When he went to that island called Melita, Paul rested there. There was peace and tranquility for some time. In a world full of uncertainty, in a world full of failure, in a world full of darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. It gives us the energy to keep on moving still the same point. In life, in ministry, in business, in your marriage, in your academics. In other words, hope is the anchor that keeps us standing fast through the storms of life. Just like the anchor keeps the ship so that the waves will not take you too far. Hope is that anchor. Hope is that Holds your life. When the boisterous storms of uncertainties in life come and buffet you like the house that is built upon the rock, sometimes it may be shaken, but hope will keep you up. Number two, why do we need hope? Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Hope 
is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Without the revelation of hope, there cannot be faith. The Bible says, now faith is, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the what? The confident assurance of the things hoped for. So we must first hope for them. Speaking about Abraham, they say, who against all hope believed in hope. Against all hope. Romans chapter 4. Against all hope believed in hope. So hope is the pillar. One of the pillars upon which faith stands. I'm very quickly, I'm rushing so that we'll get to where I'm going to dwell for tonight. There are two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Number one is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13, please. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. The blessed hope. It talks about hope that is beyond this earthly life. That's the first and the ultimate hope. Please listen to me tonight. Hope that is beyond this earthly life. Hope that is beyond the grave. The first dimension of hope that the Bible speaks to us about is what it calls the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. It said, looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So the first hope that must keep us going in life, that must keep us optimistic in life, that must keep us assured in life, is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. That assurance that no matter what happens, even if this body is destroyed, there is a blessed hope. Are you getting what I'm saying? Confident assurance. That the grave is not the end of life. That in spite of all of the poverty and the terrorism and whatever it is, there is an assurance. The Bible calls it the blessed hope. And listen. Every other manifestation of hope you have in your life is useless until this is in place. Because this is hope beyond the earthly realm. Let me tell you something. There is life beyond this place. We were talking very passionately with the school of ministry students yesterday. And we were really considering the subject of life. We are actually examining the biblical view of success and fulfillment. And I was sharing with them a few things. If your hope does not transcend beyond this earthly realm, listen to me, then of all men, you are most miserable. The Bible says, I saw the grave give up the dead. Now, all this did not happen in the earth. Life was over for them. A time where those who had the blessed hope will rejoice. The sea gave up the dead. The grave gave up the dead. All of the people. And he said, I saw the dead stand before God. And he said, great and those who were great and small. I saw standing before God senators. And I saw carpenters. I saw vice chancellors and professors. And I saw villagers. I saw people who could not get food to eat. And I saw those who their dogs could eat the food of royalty. He said they all stood before God. And the moment of truth came. Books were opened. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Books were opened. And another book was opened. He said every man was judged according to the writings of that book. And he said whosoever's name. I like the Bible. No bribery, no political party. Whosoever's name was not found, you will carry your flag, 
carry your, your, your senatorial district. Carry whatever it is to the lake of fire. Carry your prestige and your accolades. Listen to me. When you stand from the realm of the spirit and you look at the earth realm, it looks like a vapor. That's how it looks like. Anyone who has had a, a true visionary encounter and you have been given the privilege to look at earth, you know how you look at the clouds. The earth is truly like a mirage compared to spiritual realities. Therefore, we must have that blessed hope that I know that as I'm going about my business, I know that as I'm doing whatever I'm doing, thank God for breakthrough, thank God for whatever, but I am assured that if I get out in the morning and for any reason under the sun I do not re return, don't doubt where I am. I've gone to a place of peace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must convince yourself. Some of you are already afraid. There's no need being afraid of what must happen. Come to terms with it and win the war. Every time you begin, the greatest enemy of mankind, as we know, they ask the wisest man, you know, societally speaking, he's considered to be the wisest man in the earth. They ask him what is the greatest problem of mankind. He said he's shocked that the government have not started talking about it. He said the fact that everybody is dying. He said it's a very serious issue. He said forget about the issue of politics and oil and tackle this issue that men will die. You see that he's truly wise, right? He said, look at, we, we get up and we do the things that we do and there is one common denominator. Death. Millionaires have died in this country. Their money could not save them. Is that true? Men of God have died in this country. Habalists have died in this country. Children have died in this country. People have lost babies in the hospital. People have died 100 years plus. It makes no difference. Hear me. There is a blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Everybody say blessed hope. This is the greatest consolation any man can have. Goodbye world. Staying no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. Staying no longer with you. I made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. A day will come, let me tell you, every arrogant man in this earth must come to his knees. Oh yes, absolutely. There are men who live like they are gods of themselves. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord. He said, once have I spoken and twice have we heard. All power does not belong to any political party. It does not belong to any terrorist group. There is a God that sits upon the surface of the earth. He may look powerless now, but a day will come he will show his might like the brightness of the sun. And only those who have this blessed hope. Get five points without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Marry the finest woman in the world, the most handsome and the wealthiest man in the world without this blessed hope, you are nothing. Listen, do charity. Have a big ministry. Be on air. Organize crusades if you wish. If you do not have this blessed hope, in five minutes, when your life evaporates like a vapor, you have wasted your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We consider everything else in our life, but we do not pay attention to this blessed hope. Many of us, it is a shame that for many pastors, this is not even a theme of our messages in heaven. I'm going to talk about other aspects, and we're going to pray and speak over ourselves. But first and foremost, I owe a responsibility, and I told God, our primary assignment as a ministry, we have four mandates from God. Number one is massive salvation of souls. I rather leave somebody, listen, listen, look at what Jesus said to somebody who was lying to him. He said, your sins be forgiven. And the people said, what are you saying? For many of us, 
That is inferior to miracle. Hallelujah. But he said your sins be forgiven. In other words, what you need is a blessed hope. You need something higher than this. The thief on the cross, the other ones, you know, he began to harass Jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross. And the other one said, uh -uh, shut your mouth. We are getting a recompense for what we have done. We are armed robbers. They caught us. They are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole. But this man is innocent. And Jesus looked at him and said, this day, my goodness, my go all his life of misery became useful by one pronunciation to release him. Can you imagine that? Barabbas stood near the king of kings. The one who could give him blessed hope, yet he did not have it. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope, yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. Blessed hope. Many times I think about my life and I'm telling you, I live a very happy life. One of the reasons why I don't worry in my life is because I know that every other thing on earth will only happen in my life. Is that true? The subject of CGPA is over when you go to be with my Lord. If the trumpet sounds now, okay, let me not talk about death. Since you have told of death, the trumpet will still sound. The Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds. Now, I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You will not see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates, and one of my friends, he studied theater art. He said he saw my rapture entertainment paper, rapture entertainment newsletter. He said he, he saw it, he got to know it. I said, don't worry. It will be a newsletter in you by the time you check out of this place. Brothers and sisters, there is an event called rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet, I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one, he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life. When he finds out that there is no room, you are already lost, then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it. Hallelujah. Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid. Because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware of it. Satan is aware of it. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war in the midst of your life. There are people right here Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. 
There is no guessing with brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think I just know that I love God. Look at me. Come. Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, Kai. When exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? Answer me, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. Two of us, we are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been good. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one, what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the person of Jesus Christ. But tonight, the Lord wants to make all things new. I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel I should stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now in the spirit. Hallelujah. Listen. There is no playing games, brothers and sisters. Whether you are poor or rich, Right now in the church, they say, don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reading. <laughs> Whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing you should rejoice about. And say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We're going to take this altar call right now. Please, let this be a solemn moment. I am, I am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now. Hallelujah. There are people here who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord. I have served the Lord. Some of you may even be preachers, but you are saying sincerely, I am not sure that that blessed hope, there is a condition for it to happen. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you may be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have sinned. All have sinned. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not received the gift of salvation. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection, shall believe in him. Believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There are people here. Some of you, you have been around church. You, you do a lot of spiritual things. And you have believed that that is a justification. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our hope and all our pain will be no more. We will and cry, holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. Oh, this is the destiny of the church. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. Our hope and all our fears will be no more. And we will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. Worship and adore you evermore. Right now, as we sing this song, wherever you are, inside and outside, 
you need to come and surrender to Jesus. I like you to passionately, like a man running away from fire, find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. The moment we raise this song, I like you to come. Mean business with him. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. Don't sit back deceiving yourself. We will stand with the hosts of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. We will stand in the golden city Jerusalem and we will and cry holy is the Lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore for the last time now we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. Saints will see him holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. That's what we will sing at his feet. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Oh, when this life is over, that's our song. Holy, holy, holy. They that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy. Standing, receiving all kinds of crowns of glory, standing at his majesty's where he will tell us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing, Holy. interesting things in the Bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say and he died. He still died. Some of you are standing and you are crying. I tell you the truth. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Tonight can be that night. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what. There are some of us who need to rededicate our lives. I just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say, for me, I'm rededicating it. I'm saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of God. You are part of that inside and outside. Join them quickly as I pray for you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for.
forgiven to the Lord. I am so. Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul. Talk to him. He died for you. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners. As you pray, I want you to think about your life in one minute. And tell yourself, it's over. Enough of playing games. And for all of us who are standing, don't think because you are standing, it means you should not reflect. Please, in one minute, I'd like everybody to reflect on your life. Am I living my life in a way that if I see it being replayed, I will be glad I lived that way. Am I living my life in a way that if I am to watch myself in heaven, I will say, thank you, Jesus. I spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom. Lift your voice and pray. This is serious business tonight. This is why Jesus shed his blood. Please, don't you think we are playing games tonight? This is a very serious issue. If you are under the sound of my voice, you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously. No man will stand for you on that day. There is no advocate, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle. He said, books were open. I saw the dead, both small and great. Let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment. Pray. Those of you in front, pray. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you died for me. I return to you now. I return to you. Jesus, Son of God, I believe That's what you should be saying, those of you kneeling down in front. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Just the voices, I like you to hush it from the depths of your heart. Said, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting whosoever believes in him hallelujah those of you in front i'd like you to say after me from the depths of your mind i never forget this day some of you are rededicating yourself some of you are truly surrendering all say after me lord jesus i surrender aspect of my life completely to you. I make you Lord of my life. I have run away from you for too long. But tonight, like a prodigal child, I return home to you, the lover of my soul. I return to you. Wash me with your blood cleanse me make me new give me a new beginning write my name in the Lamb's book of life that when this life is over I will have that blessed hope I declare today that I willingly consciously make Jesus Lord of my life I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus. Father, what a privilege. What a privilege. I ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that the grace for a new beginning be granted. In the name of Jesus. For many of them, they have been running like a deer that pants for the water. And tonight they have found salvation. I ask that this will be a genuine desire. That on that day when we all stand, we will see them. I bless you. 
I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life. From tonight, grace to walk in righteousness. I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the King. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A big congratulations to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute. They'll just have your details and you'll return back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of us standing, we'll, before we continue, there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Keep me. Go ahead and pray. Keep me. Keep me. Pray. Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Oh, yes. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life. Keep me. Keep me from falling. He says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. Keep me from falling, that I will serve you all my life. That I will serve you all my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Let's finish up. So there are two dimensions of hope. The first is the blessed hope. And according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13, the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest. I wrote a song maybe 10, 15 years ago. The coming of the Lord is near. And I can hear the trout of the trumpet so loud. When the dead in Christ shall rise again. And we who are alive will be To a place of rest called heaven, called paradise, and there we will rejoice forevermore. Remember writing that song? It was my communication. I've taken God serious all my life, and I want to encourage us stay in God. Stay in a time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest and peace and love forever. Where there will be no wars, no terrorism, no hunger, no issue of jam and wire, no issue of corruption and death and sickness. That is our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Absolute. The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. It's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in earth. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, uh, having the promise, uh, how did it that scripture. First Timothy, I, I think, we'll get there because there are many verses to deal with. The second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life. Hope in this life. So our hope is not just in heaven alone. We have hope even in this life. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. 
first thing is to be gentle. Amen. Yes. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. If you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. We don't want you to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is, huh? and then that which is to come. So there is a promise of the quality of life that now is. Jesus speaking to the, to the disciples said, no man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdoms. He said, but he will receive in this life, this and that and that, and then in the life to come, life everlasting. There are issues in our life today that we are discouraged about and we must sustain the grace to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We need hope in this life to be able to achieve our goals, to be able to push through the walls of limitations, to be able to overcome challenges and obstacles and to triumph over circumstances. I'll take it again. We need hope in this life so that we can achieve our goals. We can push through the walls of limitations. We can overcome challenges and obstacles. And finally triumph over circumstances. These are the two dimensions of hope. One is the blessed hope at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now. Praise the Lord. Now very quickly. What is the basis for hope? What is the biblical basis for hope? Let's start with our blessed hope. That means what is the foundation, what is the assurance, what is the condition, what is the basis on which we have our hope? The blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. The first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis for my spending eternity with God. The basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died. The sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, and that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope, that truly, on account of what Christ has done, I will be able to stand blameless before the throne. Hallelujah. Number two, what gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible which we consider to be true. Revelations 21 verse 1 to 5. Let's watch this. Two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that 
The concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelation 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us, based on the prophecy in the book, that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to five. And God shall wipe away their tears. You see where we got the song that we're singing? He shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And God himself tells us in verse 5. He said, and he that sat on the throne, not a delegate. He said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, write for these words are true and faithful. So we can believe it. God himself endorsed it. That the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true. Write it. He said, document it so that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope. Are you blessed? So the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ gives us the basis for our blessed hope. Hallelujah. And then the prophecies of the Bible given and endorsed by God himself further gives us an assurance. So that is the, the, the basis for our blessed hope. What is the basis for our hope in this life then? The second dimension. What gives us assurance that the cancer will die? What gives us assurance that you will build the house? What gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life, you will emerge a champion? What gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact? I call them the attributes of God. There are three attributes of God that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life. The first attribute of God that gives us hope in this life is his creative ability. The first attribute of God that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability. His ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope. So no matter how hopeless my life is, when I look at that attribute of God, that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material, I know that there is hope for me. So when God says he can change my story, I can believe in and, and hold on to that his attribute. I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, just write it, we may not forget it. The Bible says, verse 2, the earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. But then we see the creative power of God. He said, and Elohim said, light be. All of a sudden, he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing, it means he can recreate my life no matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope to hold on to. The attribute of God, his creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, specifically from verse 9 to 12, the entire text of five loaves and two fish, we see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children 
they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I'm here. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks. All of a sudden, we saw creation at work again. Hallelujah. Everyone say, God has creative power. Because you see, for many of us, it is difficult to see how God will step in and change your situation. Because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost. Are you getting my point? How can I have hope that I will give birth to a child when the womb that should, should keep the child has been removed? Are you getting my point? Maybe because of fibroid or something, the womb was, it was removed. I saw it. I know it's gone. Can I still have hope? The creator. The creator. Hallelujah. He said, all I need is your cooperation. The creator. The one who can make it. Nothing is still a raw material for him. Everyone say, God has creative ability. So there is hope for my life. I think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out. Remember that jam? And there was 100 and something. Hallelujah. 100 and something. And I think after one of the miracle services or so, the person went back to check the jam, confirmed he had 200 and something. The creator. See, let me tell you, the attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. And the one you believe is the one that can work for you. All of the multifaceted attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. I believe every part of him. I believe everything that he can do. So, the attributes of God. The first is his creative ability. It gives us the basis to have hope in this life. Number two is God's restorative ability. His ability to restore. What does it mean to restore? To bring back to life that which is dead. To make perfect that which is imperfect. And to bring back lost opportunities. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. There is an attribute of God that can restore things. So it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless, when God steps in, In Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7, just write it, just write it for time's sake. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7, Ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the Lord to a, a valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. The prophet of God was taken to a valley. The Bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry, meaning they had been there a long time. And he says, son of man, can these bones live again? And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, at the prophet's word, bones began to be joined to bones. I'd like you to say, God can restore. Say, it, God can restore. God can bring back to life that which is dead in my life. God can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life. And God can restore lost opportunities in my life. Oh yes. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Arise. Everything that was lost can be restored. I'd like you to say hallelujah. In John chapter 11, the entire text is from verse 1 to 44. But the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus, whom you love, is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death. Meaning the situation will not be worse than it already is. 
And when the master speaks, you believe him. But then they return. And Jesus told them, let's go to our brother Lazarus for he sleepeth. And they said, ah, if he sleepeth, it's good for him. And then he came directly. He said, our brother Lazarus is dead. Four days. And the restorer. He was on his way coming. And when Mary saw him, she was angry. She was grieved. And they said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, but now I know that it's not late. And Jesus said, Lazarus, your brother will arise. There will be restoration. He said, I know. Lazarus, I know. You have already been speaking about the blessed hope. I know. And Jesus said, do you not know that I am the resurrection? That means it's not an event. It's a personality. It can happen now for you. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he looked at a stone. Men had concluded. And he said, roll away the stone. Let's review that case. For 10 years, your father's promotion has been delayed. But he said, roll away the stone. You take a step of faith. Show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone. I will roll it for you. Roll it. If you want me to visit that case, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus stood. And in chapter 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He had so much compassion. And he said, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. And I don't say this because I'm doubting you, paraphrasing, but so that these people will know. And he echoed a voice. The resurrection and the life. He sent a signal that rattled edges, the place of death. The dead people. And he said, Lazarus. You know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word. And that word came, passed through the astral realm. And went, and the word like a meter. And it saw the spirit of Lazarus. And he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit. And the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those grave clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asked you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asked you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, I have learned from experience and I have learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time. It is the process of preparation that takes time. For about 12 years, Joseph was being trained. But in one night, he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In one night, Hadassah, Esther, for one year, she kept preparing. Listen, the fact that you are going through a period of pruning, a period of waiting, does not mean God is not moving. If you think he's too slow, you will want to move faster than him. And you will complicate your journey. Wait. In one night, God changed the story of a nation. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, even if he said by this time next year, it will be fair enough. But he said tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Someone is sitting here tonight. By tomorrow night, you will sit down with your hand on your head and you'll be saying, my Lord, I didn't know I was this close. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. That's the testimony of many people now. Listen. You are you have come so close. You've been enduring for years. But now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny, 
Many of us want to turn back. I want you to know that the restoration ability of God is still in force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I almost let go. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I trust the Lord. Something happened to us, a very interesting story. I won't give you all the details. Happened to us at the airport when we were traveling. Some things came up. There were lots of complications, and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that. And, you know, we were a bit concerned because I think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth. And we had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that. And humanly speaking, humanly speaking, at a point, in fact, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets, there was all hope was lost. They told us there's no room in this. This and that and that has happened. So they, they were, there had to be changes. And there was no human way. I called the guys and I said, guys, this is the situation we're in now. If things get bad, this and that and that, this is worse. Let's just prepare for the worst, but God is good. Let me tell you something. It did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets. Is that true? We're the last to, to get into the flight. Hallelujah. They were standing. I'm not sure they were even aware. You see that? And they just, the t everything was in less than 10 minutes. God, when God is ready to stand up on your case, see, when you see God keep quiet, Papa Deboye preached a message, when God is silent. When God is silent, that's when you should start talking. Praise him. Give him room. Give him space through your, your praise. And say, Lord, I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. Take the time to prepare the table because it's going to be a large table. There are people who should come. Take the time. When God arises, he will scatter. Earth. Let me tell you something. When it is your season of breakthrough, I don't care whether they say curses or yokes or X, Y, Z. God will stamp everything and open the door and say, let me see the man who is talking. For someone, if you will just wait a little longer, this is the word of the Lord. The miracle will happen before you celebrate Christmas. Just wait a little longer. The mighty God is still alive. He told you and he's still faithful. Oh, we judge him faithful. It will still happen. It will still happen. Who is God speaking to? It will still happen. It will still happen. One of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the lady is in ush, ushers and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year. I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. And the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a great work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over. Come on. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. His ability to restore. God can restore the job of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can restore it. He can restore it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul.
God can restore every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen, the farmer worm and the caterpillar. I will restore. It is within my power to restore. The second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6, I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush. From now, take up wings. We're going to rush. Hallelujah. 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, he said, go ye. In other words, let's increase space. Verse 3. And and one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servant. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. Five. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master, it was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Mm. Verse 6. And the man of God said, Calm down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place. And he used an insignificant thing. Sorry. A stick that has no relevance and he threw it upon and the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top. Verse 7. Therefore he said take it up to thee and he took his hand. I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names. In a way and a manner you never expected to happen. My God will show up for you before the end of this month. In the name that is above all names. I'm speaking to you. There are things that you have lost and only God can give you. I stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names. I prophesy to you. No matter where that axe is, it is still in the river. It didn't disappear. It only left you. In the name that is above all names, we command that axe head to float. Please sit down. Listen, look at me. The fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing. It is there, but it is not within your reach. It is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is. I hope you understand. How many of us can state, um, I think that's the first law of thermodynamics, right? What does it say? Huh? energy can neither be what nor destroy is that true that means the concept of disappearance is a mirage it only leaves your sight but it's somewhere there hmm. the bones were scattered but when the master spoke they found themselves you would have thought it's over hear me let me tell you something armed robbers came to your house and they stole you do not see what they've carried but there are many kinds of it in the earth. And when the master steps up as a restorer, you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life. And when God restores, he does not give you what you lost. He gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it. That's what restoration is. If God just gives you what you lost, it's called progress, not restoration. Until God gives you plus the balance on top, Said, who has believed our report? The third attribute of God, very quickly, that gives us the basis for hope in this life is God's ability to bring acceleration. God's ability, his attribute as a God that can suspend time, 
he can move beyond time. Move beyond protocols. He can expedite the process of certain things. His ability to bring acceleration. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. The Bible speaks to us about the prophet. Hallelujah. A great prophet of God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Next verse. We we'll read down to 46. And Ahab went to eat and drink. And Elijah went to the top of Carmel. Watch this. Ahab ate and drink and he started running. He had started going. But Elijah seemed to be delaying. He was here sitting. Let's watch what happens. And he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed 43. And all of that. He told his servant, go and check until seven times 44. All the time. While those seven times were happening, Ahab was already running. He was already moving ahead. The Bible says it came to pass that behold, there arises a little cloud like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, okay, right here. Sorry, I, I got it wrong. This is the point where he told Ahab, prepare your chariot, get thee down, uh, that the rain stopped thee not. So, now he started running. Verse 45. Ah, kabona kataya. The Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So we see that Ahab had gone very far. But the man of God was there, no help. 46. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he gathered up his loins and ran on barefoot. Come on, say speed. A man on barefoot started running. He said he ran before Ahab and he caught up with him down to Jezreel. So, it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is, God can, God can give speed to your feet. And you will run and in one month, you will do what has taken men 10 years. 10 years. Brothers and sisters, believe me, it is possible. When God quickens, he said he will make your feet like the hind's feet. His ability to bring acceleration. The Bible tells us how that when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side, they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him. Is that true? And the Bible says he stayed to pray. They were six hours ahead of Jesus. Six hours ahead. But when he got up, he started walking. And within a short time, he caught up with them. And he was about to overtake them. They thought he was a ghost. And he walked on water. It doesn't have to be the normal process. When God steps in, he can break protocols. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. But our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10. Project verse 6 to 10 for us. John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10. The Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana. And the Bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding. It probably took them days to make wine. But that wine finished. They needed a miracle. And something happened. It says, and there were there six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Containing two or three this and that. And then verse 7. And Jesus said, fill the water pots. It does not have to undergo the process of fermentation. There is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen. Come on now. Ah, yes. You don't need to wait until it produces all of those things. Are you getting what I'm saying? No enzymes, no nothing, no ethanol, no nothing. No, no hydrocarbon, no nothing. A technology in the spirit. Fill the water pots with water. And they fill them up to the brim. Verse 8. And he said, draw it out and take it to the governor. Chemical reaction finished. Yield 100%. Are you getting my point? 100%. No waste, nothing to throw away. No releasing of any CO2 or anything. No. Chemical process finished. Expedited time at once. And he said, draw it out and take it. Verse 9. And when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine, 
So on the way, it became wine at once. And he knew not whence it was. He said, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10. And he said, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse comes. In other words, people give their best at the first time. But he said, why have you kept the good wine until now? There is someone here within a short time. What you will do, men will think you took 10 years to do it. But that it happened within days. One of our brothers, Mukhtar, I think he did his whole, his whole project within a short time. Because they later canceled the whole thing. And what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months. Everybody shout speed. Shout it again. Oh, God will accelerate your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, before we pray, how do we activate hope? It must be activated. It doesn't just happen. Three keys and we'll rise up to pray. Activating hope. Principle number one. Total surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You want to activate hope in your life. Both blessed hope and hope in this life. It starts with surrendering to Jesus Christ. Total surrender gives you an eternal consolation. That in the end of all things, you will be with Jesus forever. I call it the master hope. The master hope. When you surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you have ultimately activated hope. Scriptural references. Romans 5 verse 2. Don't project. Romans 5 verse 2. And then 1 John 5 verse 13 talks about us knowing that we have eternal life. So total surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. Number two, how do we activate hope? The power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. Declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners. The Bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives. Testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners. So every time I testify, of what God has done in my life, it activates hope. So someone who is about giving up just hears that God did this. And he said, if God did it, then I will still hold on. Hallelujah. Psalm 66 verse 16 says, Come and hear all ye that fear the Lord, and I will declare what he had done for my soul. I will declare it. I will declare it. In Luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39, just give us verse 39. Luke chapter 8 from verse 39. But the whole context is 26 to 39. The Bible speaks to us about the madman in Gadara. Hallelujah. The madman in Gadara. After he was healed, he was blessed. He wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus said, no, go. And the Bible says, Return to your house. Jesus was telling him, go and testify. Return to your house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And the Bible says, and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto Jesus. So he published. Testimonies are very powerful. Let me give you two more scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22 and Psalms 40 verse 9. Psalms 22 verse 22 and Psalms 40 verse 9. All these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify. In fact, the Bible says it this way. It says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your testimony is very important. There are many people here, God has done too many things for you, but nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. Hallelujah. 
when they say submit your, your names and come and tell us what God has done. There are many of us here that have striking testimonies. Many of us come for counseling and God does remarkable things and we keep quiet. I tell you, we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry. In fact, there are more people who share testimonies outside of Koinonia than those who share testimonies here. When you share your testimony, you, you activate hope in the life of people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget Steve Strings. I remember one time, um, Steve gave a testimony. It was a miracle how he got admission in ADU. He got admission in the third list. The first list came out, his name was not there. The second list came out, and his name was not there. But he had the testimony of someone who were in living faith that Sunday. And the testimony of somebody. And the person testified that he went around Senate seven times. Angry and saying, Lord, this is Jericho. It must fall. And when admission list came out, his name was there. Steve Strings said, that's it. Steve Strings went around seven times. That list came out. His name was there. Because of testimonies. Listen, many of you have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result, but you have kept quiet. Hallelujah. One of our school of ministry people, he, he came in, I think he should be around here, and he came, he, he sent me a text, a very humbling testimony. In fact, I told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what God has remarkably done in his life within a short time. God has done too many things for us. And if you will not give him the glory, you will stop seeing his hand in your life. He said, if you will not glorify me, I will raise up stones. Meaning, I will only raise up what will glorify me. Hallelujah. So, the power of testimonies. Number three, and this is where we wrap up the ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophet in office, but men and women of God who stand in prophetic dimensions. Listen to me. This is, this is very important. I want you to listen because we're about to pray. All through scripture, true prophets of God have been dispensers of hope and agents of change. Men have always been God's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people. Hallelujah. Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath to preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha, was sent to the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet. They were about to take her children and do trade by battle with them. And the woman ran to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Do this and that and that. And the woman came out of the situation. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of Naaman. The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the, of the Syrian army. He was a great man, but he was leprous. Hallelujah. And when they sent him with a letter, the prophet gave an instruction. Go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan. And that was it. The scripture we just shared in 2 Kings chapter 6. The restoration of the earth head by the instruction of a prophet of God. Listen to me. When a people lack a prophetic voice when a people or a ministry or a, ter a, a, a territory lack true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience I'm saying this please get it I will repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices, then hopelessness, despair, and doom 
becomes their experience again and again and again. I'm trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. Let's look at something that the prophet said. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. We're rounding up right now. While they project that, I'd like you to write Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7. We've read the scripture. The valley of dry bones. It happened to the prophet of God. The prophet of God gave an instruction. Every time you are in need of hope, you are in need of change, among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of God. Hallelujah. I think he was here. I don't know which month. I hope maybe the family may even be here. They brought for me a medical student. The final year, last session, the lady just became mad. Is it because of reading? Is she the first to go to school? It's a spirit. A woman labors on her daughter, my brothers and my sisters. And just when this woman is about to reap the reward of her labor, have you not heard of people who graduated on their way going back home to celebrate? A bike comes out from nowhere. There is no bike that comes out from nowhere. Thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, not the noisome pestilence. Well, you can choose to believe what I'm telling you, or you can choose to allow time prove to you that this life does not joke. If Jesus himself got up early in the morning to pray and put everything in order, he says, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth thereof? I've shared with you how many times I'm I want to take a trip and somebody genuine prophet genuine some of them are my friends and send me a text and say apostle be careful i saw an accident i saw this that is the plan of the devil but the ability to know his plan and conquer it is where victory comes from listen to me it is selfish to forget about your family and forget the let me tell you this you know Esther was going to make a mistake. The same mistake of Vashti, Esther was about to make it. She was about to forget her people and the purpose for which she went to the palace. And Mordecai said, don't think that when they are done with us, you will be spared. Sometimes when the devil wants to destroy you, he will leave the most powerful person to continue while he destroys every other person. Do you know that their going down will affect you spiritually? Tonight we came for serious business. I vowed a vow that I'm not going to waste the time of any of God's people. No. This, this, this ministry is not a museum. This is the place where we dislodge darkness. You, you have to return with a testimony. A woman called me one time she had this son whether he joined friends or so and went somewhere I don't know what he went to go and do this young boy and maybe about 10 or 11 started hearing voices physical voices like word of knowledge sometimes they can tell him kill yourself or pour hot water you know you, you know that is of the devil when the instruction does not carry the life of God God will never ask you to pour hot water on your body how does it glorify Jesus the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And this boy continued to do all these kinds of things. And I told her, I said, Mama, thank God you brought this boy. This boy would die for nothing one day. Hell is rearming itself to make sure there is an onslaught, an assault against the body of Christ. And many times we're just crossing our legs. Listen, I need you to know, I've taught you about warfare. We teach warfare correctly. We are not people who fight from a standpoint of foolishness. We are standing from a standpoint of victory. But that establishment, you must do it. Otherwise, victory will not be automatic. Hebrews chapter 2, it says, But we do not yet see all things under his feet. Please, let me say this respectfully. Be careful who you listen to. And be careful the content of the spiritual information you are given. 
just because people are sincere may not mean their communications are balanced and accurate listen to what i'm telling you many people have become casualties of imbalanced spiritual communications jesus told us everywhere in his crusade demons came they were not afraid of Jesus' own crusade. Demons, they followed people. They didn't wait outside and enter later on. They came. Imagine Jesus in a crusade. Praise the Lord. The people shouted hallelujah and the demons were still in them. And they did not go. When the word is not engaged, it does not have any power to do anything. A spirit can sit down. The same way some of you are sitting quietly now. As sincere and innocent as you are. In the next few minutes, you'll be surprised what will be happening in your own life. And then you will see doors that have been closed opening like this. Then you will know that these doors were not closed by mistake and will not be opened by mistake. Everything good comes to everybody except you. The moment is your turn, something terrible happens. A gentleman just sees you and says, beautiful lady, can I go and see your parents? And that's the end of it. His business goes down, his life goes down, everything crashes until he leaves you, then he goes back up. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? So while it is true that it's the Holy Spirit that ultimately creates conviction the manifestation of the miraculous in our lives and in the church you know when i came down you need to see the multitudes of people outside there are people sitting on the soccer way here my brothers and my sisters listen you went to school do you think human beings are stupid do you think someone will transport himself from another nation or another state? Some of you have not eaten since you came. You came straight to sit down. Is God so wicked to sit down and allow you carry your trouble and go back? Oh, not Koinonia. I welcome you to a place where God has given us the keys to deal with everything that is not of God. I saw so many people standing outside the overflow by the roadside. And compassion just gripped my heart. I said, imagine if I were one of these people. And they were happily standing. They were not complaining. They just knew that if I may but touch the hem of his garment. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you. Forgive me if it sounds proud. But God has given us something. Let me tell you sincerely. We, we make bold and we ask the world to come and receive. Because he has given us something. I told you last week, you only knock a door that you don't have the key. When you have a key, you don't, you stop knocking, you open. That's the same way your destiny will be open. The Lord declared prophetically that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. So in a meeting like this, if I were you, my heart is stayed on that word. Listen, let me tell you. Please listen. You see me teaching passionately, we are going to pray. When I teach like this, huh, I don't teach as a preacher. I come with my heart full of a burden. Are you getting what I'm saying? I come sincerely with my heart full of a burden because I love God, but I love his people too. My greatest satisfaction is not my personal progress. It's seeing the hand of God made manifest in your life. When instructions are given, when these spiritual things are given, you must open your heart to believe them. You see, the, the gospel works with the simplicity of childlike faith. Sometimes many of us carry this trado African pride, and that's what stops us from receiving. God wants to step in and touch you and you are wondering, will God really touch me? You know my peculiar problem. You know the name. Abba, are you the first to be in trouble? God knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble. Let me tell you this. I don't care what the situation is, but I want us to agree that this God of heaven, uh, the king of the universe, that he will arise for you tonight. You see, let me tell you this. 
my prayer this year when i was fasting and praying this year i prayed a prayer i said lord some people don't know what a testimony is give them one they only know how other people's testimonies the lord did this for this but they have never had a testimony themselves the day you have a real testimony yourself it will humble you you wouldn't know whether to stand or to kneel down that's what i'm praying for you for today a testimony a testimony when the hand of god comes in a meeting and upon a man you see let me tell you this the supernatural is not just falling down and roll you can fall down and roll from left to right and stand up and go back and not testify the proof that god came is the testimony that follows the testimony the testimony of jesus the testimony of jesus apostle i came here barry much miracle service by april miracle service i'm one month pregnant that's a testimony Listen, come David Dam. When the devil oppresses your life, destroys everything about you, he uses men as a canvas to write a letter to God that your dominion and your royalty is still being contested with. Oppression is a letter sent through men to God, the highest of God's creation. The devil writes upon your life. I will destroy the family and I will make sure everyone begs. Like you send a, um, a chat, send. And then a miracle is God's reply. That God writes through you and says, in spite of this, I am still on the throne. It's true. I believe in miracles I honestly and truthfully believe in miracles I believe in principles I believe in mysteries but I believe in divine intervention my brothers and my sisters God can shorten a man's journey what then is the excellency of his mercy listen God is a God of process I agree listen carefully God is a God of principles I agree he will not excuse laziness and he will not excuse spiritual laxity but let me tell you when blind Bartimeo said thou son of David have mercy on me the mercy of God can shorten the journey of a man if you get born again at age 40 do you know how long it takes to know God genuinely know God you don't read your Bible in two months and know God but there's something the Spirit of God can do and give you a solid encounter that in six months you have caught up with the spiritual level of more than five years how about restoration your parents started building from 1999 till today it has stopped at Lintel level right there you went to school and said I'm going to pay it and finish everything the day you said you pay it you almost died I made a vow with my life that I will believe this word and I will engage it life is too risky to be careless with spiritual laws engage it don't wait until the devil kills your life and your children before you know many believers learn too late let me say this and thank God for his mercy you will receive but do you know there are some of you the Lord spoke to you about coming here since last year you've been arguing and giving reasons and excuses your situation would not have been that bad but thank God because although Lazarus was three days dead Jesus is still the resurrection and the life not only the healer when I prayed I told the Lord I said please Lord give people a testimony real testimonies i was blind now i see god did something in three weeks to my finances everybody see what god can do god transformed my family god turned me around and did something for me i don't doubt your love for god but there must be proofs of that love there must be proofs of that love somebody shout lord give me an evidence say lord give me an evidence lord, 
I believe in proofs. John chapter 4 and verse 48. I'll begin to pray shortly. Bless you. 4 verse 48. He says, And Jesus said unto him, Who was speaking here? Jesus. Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. How true. How true. That there are so many people in your family, until they see what the power of God does in your life, they will never believe your God. They think God is one of those things. This is a charm. This is this. This is that. And then God is one of them. But the day, like Dagon, all those gods fall before the Almighty God, and you return back with a solid evidence. Let me tell you, that day, like Pharaoh, your loved ones will confess that this, your God, is God. Are we together? So I want you to be serious. Don't sit down and just look around and say, ah, who is going to receive? Let me clap for him. No, it's an insistence. It's a desperation. Except ye see miraculous signs, you shall not believe. Luke chapter 5. We'll read the first 11 verses. That miracles can help to create solid convictions. Charles and Francis Hunter, powerful evangelists, they've gone to be with the Lord now. They wrote a book that a miracle is worth a thousand words. I believe them. I believe them. The world is tired of our noise and our stories. They want to see a demonstration and a manifestation of the reality of the life and the power of God. It says, and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Next verse, please. And saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Uh -huh. We're reading to 11. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Next verse. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets for a drought. Five. What happened? Simon answering said, Master, we have toiled all night. In other words, he said, Lord, look, you are not the first to pray for me. A man of God prayed for me in Zaria. Another man prayed in wherever. You know, so God is one of those things. You bless me. Oh, yeah, do it. Master, we have toiled all night. Not for a few hours. All night. Night vigil, looking for a fish. And did not catch even one. It says, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Six. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. And their next seven. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships. Miracles can create relationships. That you get a miracle. And partners that were minding their business, you can say, come and join me. Who will not follow someone with results? Who will not? Let me tell you, the Bible talks about a wealthy man. Um, how did he put it now? A poor man that we, even with much entreaties, they will run away from him. There are many people that come from where we come from and will pass us as if they don't know us because you represent shame. And anything that looks like Ichabod, the departure of the glory, men will usually find a way to excuse it from. Ah, but the Bible says you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah, a delight. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sing. Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw this, look at this. This is what miracles do. He fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, I'm a sinful man. Was a sermon preached? A serious miracle happened. And that miracle created conviction. The same way some of you have been laughing at men of God sincerely. And laughing at everything that has to do with the power of God. And by the time we'll be sharing the grace tonight, you will stand. And go back quietly not talking to anybody and say I've seen today I heard with my ears like Job but I've seen with my eyes that God is real 
and his power is real. His grace is real. Nine. For he was, this is what led to the repentance. He was, so men can be astonished to repentance. That they look at your life and say, promise, when did this happen? When did God lift you? Was it not last year? Together we were discussing. And you tell him there is a name God is called, the, the lifter of men. The lifter of men. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, run away from anybody who tell you results don't matter. They do. They do. Out of the abundance of the evidence of the workings of God in your life, the nations will bow to your God. They will never bow to you just because you are talking. Man of God, hear me. No results, you have MP pews. There's, there's no way around it. There must be an evidence, a serious evidence. When John questioned the messiahship of Jesus, he didn't answer with a statement. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. The blind see, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to the meek. And then he says, blessed is he that is not offended. So the moment there are no miracles, the messiahship of the Christ is questioned. John himself, the one who ordained Jesus, said, go and ask him, is he the messiah? Miracles confirm that Jesus is the Messiah. God is not a herbalist. He's not a herbalist that is ahead of other herbalists. No. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. There are people who have names. Politicians have names. Businessmen have names. Captains of industry. Gatekeepers of mountains have names. But my brothers and my sisters, there is a name. It says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. And it's in that name tonight that we will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness. Amen. The miraculous manifests the glory of God and causes people to not only believe God, but to trust God. John chapter 2 and verse 11. The first miracle of Jesus, what we call the miracle at the wedding of the Cana of Galilee. He turned water to wine. The Bible says this beginning of miracles, this beginning of, not this beginning of sermons, not this beginning of discussions, this beginning of miracles, did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him. Believed on him. We believe in the God that heals and saves and delivers. That's why we kept the seats for you. That's why we, we knew you would come because the hand of God will bring you and we knew you would not be disappointed. Brothers and sisters, there is a God in heaven. God is not a herbalist. Don't let your pain demean him. He is still the king of the universe. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good. It takes the manifestation of the power of God to do good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. For God was with him. For God was with him. We're going to pray. You have to convince yourself. It's going to be a quick walk. And we're going to cry to God and say, Lord, whatever I carried from my house, whatever I carried from my place of work that I've brought before you, it should not return back with me. It should be clear and evident that I met the Lord Jesus Christ. It should be clear and evident. 
right where you are sitting you will soon stand up but right where you are sitting i'd like you to talk to the lord please be serious and be desperate lord i have come to you i've come to you i've come to you i've come to you my life must be changed my finances must be changed my destiny must be changed lord i've come to you as a pastor i've come to you as a prophet as an apostle there has to be greater oil upon my life lord i hear you are a restorer restore me online please make sure you are praying those outside make sure you are praying there is a god that answers prayer when the lord turned again the captivity of zion it says we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for them it says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the negev turn again our captivity there is a god that can turn around the captivity of men pray doesn't matter where you are seated doesn't matter where you are connecting from the power of God is able to save to the uttermost father I'm praying that infirmity in my body must leave this night. That financial situation must die this night. That oppression that has kept my family down. Did the Bible not say this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith? God is a miracle worker. God is a glorious God. God is a miracle worker. God is a glory
are going to pray shortly and I'll begin to minister by the Spirit. Your own assignment is to receive. You have come. Let me tell you something. There is enough grace to solve whatever challenge it is that has plagued you. Yours is to believe in the power of God. It says if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A lady, the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside. Please carry her and bring her now. There is a lady I'm seeing. I just saw light from in here. Write the power of God upon that lady. Please bring her. Please bring her. And then bring the someone on this row. I'm seeing like, like a smoke just going round. And it's like it's locating someone. The power of God is going to come on someone. Please pick the person and bring the person out. You reign. You reign. Hello. from outside I crush the hand of captivity over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I crush the hand of captivity over your family in the name of Jesus I saw a lot of oppression over the life of this lady and in the name of Jesus we silence the voice of wickedness we silence the voice of wickedness hold on please the Lord is showing me something right now. I saw this while I ministered in Abel Kuta. I started seeing snakes on the ground. Snakes on the ground. And that's what I'm seeing right now. And this is, this is the manifestation of a spirit. And there are many families that are under this yoke. Whether you believe it or not, just let me minister to you. I'm declaring right now, the power of God is going to start coming on people that represent those families. Bring them out. You are not shouting anything. You are not saying anything. Bring them out. I'm speaking by the Spirit. The Word of God has been declared. There are families. I'm seeing serpents, snakes, snakes, inside and outside. Bring them. Kabaroko even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. And the captives of the mighty, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, I judge those spirits wherever you are, represented in anyone here, represented in anyone here, I speak by the hand of God. Bring them out. I'm still on that case. The power of God is still locating people. I'm seeing snakes. name of Jesus I'm still praying we are not doing too many things tonight we are going to the root of many people's challenges I'm saying it again there are still spirits and I speak by the anointing of the Spirit of God wherever they are overflow one two three I 
across the road. I'm declaring judgment, judgment upon those spirits. The fire of God is coming upon you right now. Whether you are standing for yourself or for your family, bring them out. There is no escape for when his voice comes, they come out from their hiding place. Hallelujah. Now, listen, there are people, I'm seeing something that looks like a knife being inserted in people, and I'm seeing people beginning to run, just run. When you see people doing that, hold them and bring them. The Lord is bringing deliverance. That one is not speed. This one is not the prayer for speed. I'm just telling you as the Lord is showing me. Right now, I decree and declare, I don't know those that the Lord is cutting them free from every kind of diabolism. But I stretch my hands by the Spirit. I command judgment on every force, judgment on every power in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is coming upon them. You will begin to see them run around, just running. It's, it's, it's not a, a making of their own. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave. In the name of Jesus Christ, and at the count of three, any family, whether territorially or by whatever connection, is tied to the spirit of the grave. I'm declaring at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, the power of God is setting you free. One, two, three. The spirit of the grave, the spirit of the grave, the spirit of the grave, I curse you by the God of heaven. The spirit of the grave, I curse you by the God of heaven. Just follow me this night. Now, I'm praying for all those in front. They came out because the Lord showed something. I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three, I speak to these spirits. Release everything you have taken from these families. One, two, go, go, go. Out of their lives, out of their destinies. Out of their lives, out of their destinies. I command a release. I command a release. I command a release. Release breakthroughs. Release open doors. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please just pay attention and let God help you. You came here tonight. 
to receive. Listen to me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed. Someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you. Or it may happen once in a while. This is a strange oppression of darkness. And I declare, I'm praying right now. I'm seeing fire all over this place because there are many people that is the root cause of many oppressions in your life. At the count of three, you will shout that name again. That is above every other name. And some of you will feel something leaving you immediately. I declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions, at the count of three, let there be emancipation. One, two, get ready, three. I command those spirits, go now. Strangers of the night. Strangers of the night. Kebrakatakata. Rekatakata. Help that gentleman. Strangers of the night. Reketepe rekata. Embreketeteketekete. Bring them out. Strangers of the night. I curse you by the God of heaven. Molesting the saints. Planting sicknesses in their bodies. Hello, Kim Madonna. There is a certain family here. I'm seeing that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone. Something that has to do with a stone. I don't know what that means and in what tribe. But I'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone. I don't know if it's for protection or for whatever. But in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That any fraternity with the elements of Christ. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Help them, please. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The mysteries behind the strange hardship of people. The mysteries behind the oppression of people. Oppression of families. Doors. Doors are opening. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Doors. Doors. Some of you will feel fire on your hands. Fire on your hands. Doors are opening, two leaf gates in the spirit, fire on your hand. You will know by the fire that comes to your hand. I'm seeing fire coming on people's hands. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Doors opening, you must testify. Doors opening, doors opening, doors opening. Age long doors, age long doors that have been closed for many years. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains been taken from your feet chains being removed in the name of Jesus I decree and declare I saw an angel stand there chains being taken up from your feet in the name of Jesus Christ chains being taken from off your feet listen let me explain something to you this is not just some 
disorganized jamboree. God is turning the destinies of men up. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy. Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now. There are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life, but there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals, individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, once I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. I stretch my hands now among the Emmanuels and the people delay, delay, delay. There is an anointing coming now. It's crushing that spirit. Just because I'm praying for Emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you. In the name of Jesus, delay, delay. God is visiting delay. Broken by the spirit of God. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. He came to set the captives free. To set the captives free. Hold on. This young lady, lift your hands. This, this, yes, you. Lift your hands. I'm stretching my hands towards you. I don't know what it is that I saw, but I saw something like smoke. The other one, the smaller one with white. Yes. I just saw something like smoke coming out of you. And the Lord is saying this is oppression for many years. That has something to do with your abdominal region. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that oppression go. Let it leave you. Let it go. Let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus there is a woman, now I'm going to pray for people generally, but I don't know how we'll do this. There is a barren woman in overflow three. Barren woman, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Please, if, if you can allow the woman to run and come. God is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child. Overflow three, please let her run and come. Ya bone na kao Sujata ne na kao Sir King Salam Sir King Abdana Ya bone na kao Sujata Maureen, Maureen, I'm hearing a name, Maureen, 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 what is your name, lift your hands, where are you from, shout Jesus, loud as you can, Jesus, let the power of witchcraft, 
over your life be broken. My dear, look at me. Look at me. Shout Jesus. I crush that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And the man you see in your dream, in the name of Jesus, may you never see that man again. Please make sure you, they don't, why is mama here? Is she Maureen? This woman, I, I'll pray for you. That woman, come, madam. Is that your daughter? Come, madam. Where are you coming from, ma? Let her come. Sir? Where are you coming from? I'm from Area C. Area I'm C? No, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Mama, you are a sincere woman. But if I do not pray for you, huh? It's a bite that will kill you from the market in an accident. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck and they just say survive by that the woman is dead. I'm not a prophet of doom, mama. Please, don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hands. I extend your life by the power of the Holy Spirit that the plague of death... See, let me prophesy upon someone here. Anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year. I'm praying by the Spirit now. I'm praying by the Spirit and in the name of Jesus, anyone that the Spirit of death is haunting, anyone being haunted by the Spirit of death, I command that it is crushed now in Jesus' name. What is your name, my dear? Maureen. Come. You will look at a beautiful lady like this. But in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing a human being, but no face. No face like this. I'm just seeing a blank face like this. Let me tell you what this means. It's a yoke of bad luck. That people stand and cannot bless you. You have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded. The lady on yellow, lift your hands. There's the call of God upon your life. There is a prophetic grace that is upon you. And the Lord is saying you are stepping into it right now. I stretch my hands to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into that grace. I'm still praying for her. In the name of Jesus I declare. I'm seeing fire coming upon you right now. And that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. bad luck. Listen, I'm going to hold her, but a different person is the one that will receive before I pray for her. This is, just allow me to do my, my mad thing. Hold my hand. In the name of Jesus, I'm not praying for her. I'm praying for someone now by the spirit of the Lord, but the Lord is saying I should hold her as I pray for the person. Lord, in the name of Jesus, this yoke of bad luck, I'm speaking now. Please help them. This yoke of bad luck by the power of the Holy Spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you. In the name of Jesus, let it be broken now. 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 Be broken now. now, let me pray for you. Be free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I take away this that I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We are going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen. Are you married? You are married. Yes, sir. But you don't have a child. Yes, sir. From Overflow 3. Yes, sir. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not, but you are married. Yes, sir. Come and stand here and watch the God of wonders. I don't know you. Madam, from Overflow 3? You are from Overflow 3. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Why did you come? Your name is Maureen. What do you do, madam? Hold on. I'm a businesswoman. You are a businesswoman. Where? I used to sell at uh, yeah, um, random Kanu. But right now, the business is scattered. Do you know why I'm asking you? No. I must pray for you. Because this thing is not only you. There is nobody doing well in your family. Your entire family. This is what I'm seeing. It's a spirit. Huh? 
except you open up something and miss even physical money used to get missing from you you will keep money and count it and found find out that it's not what you kept is that true if i'm lying just say i'm lying where are you from from enugu anambra state i'm seeing the map of nigeria and i'm seeing the state anambra i'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state. Anyone, usually when God shows me this, anybody who is from that state connected by blood, the power of God begins to come upon them to bring deliverance. It's a sign and a wonder. I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus that anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you, be free right now in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Please help them. Be free in the name of Jesus. Anambra State, be free in the name of Jesus. I'm still seeing the map in my vision. Be free in the name of Jesus. My friend, that young man holding his hands, shout Jesus from where you are. The yoke is broken. I cast it out of your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I need to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Look at me. You insulted a woman some years ago and the woman told you to not be well with you. It was like a joke. Truly the thing followed you. This is what God is showing me. Now, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm going to pray for you. I don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it. You insulted the woman and she stood and told you that it would not be well. Because what you were saying about her was not what she did. Hold my hands. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, the scourging tongues of men. The scourging tongues of men. Except you know where you stand. A curse causeless shall not stand. But if there is a cause, it will stand though. It will stand. Are we together now? I will pray. Where are your siblings, madam? Hi. This woman, no. Oh. You are not here alone. Where are the rest? Call them. Just stand where you call. What is their name? AGK. Quickly, please. And Victor. AGK, come. And, and who? Victor. That is and my Victor. Son. Victor is not your brother. Victor is a small my boy. Son, yes. Where is he? Let him come. Because I'm seeing the boy. You are saying Victor is a little boy. Ah, uh, are you married? Yes. You have a son. Yes. Your son's name too is Victor. Yes, he's the one that called. Is the boy that you are talking yes. about? You said your brother. No, HK is my brother. Let the boy come. As young as that boy is too. If I don't pray for him, he will start stealing. Eh? There are two boys, small boys that will be delivered from this spirit. No matter where you keep anything, they must steal it. We are not condemning people. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. God is delivering people. To the pure, all things are pure. Nobody is calling any family a bad family. But this is a place where God is visiting people. Where is the person, please? Come, celebrate him as he comes. You're welcome, sir. I will pray for you. God is going to turn your family around. This is the little boy. My friend, how are you? Come. How old are you? 11 years old. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I will pray for you. How can a nice boy like this and the next thing start picking things? Do you know, let me tell you, these small children that steal are not thieves. It's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment, it was not dealt with because most of what they steal, they don't need it. That's how you know it's a spirit. Are we together? Yes. That's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy. Don't assume they will be spiritual by default.
my friend let me pray for you father thank you for this adorable young man and this guy has a great destiny you see this boy i'm looking at a star rising as i'm laying my hands on him this is what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus christ i pray for you you will be a great man by the power of the holy spirit hold this woman the anointing of the spirit is coming on her in the name of jesus christ sir what do you do a medical sales representative you are a medical sales representative medical sales representative can i pray for you yes, you are a sincere person now eh? but this thing they are just forces that want to destroy your family i will pray for you huh eh? april may june it will look like you held a charm the way god will turn your life around you believe it in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you madam come the power of god is coming upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare this thing that i'm seeing tied to your waist i lose it right now by the power of the holy spirit be set free now in the name of jesus christ you are the one trusting god for a child come how long have you been married three years three years no child you too are you married five years four five months. years four months yes. no child Said after two surgeries, he said, My husband cannot impregnate me. He did surgery twice. Don't cry. Jesus is here. Huh? You went through two surgeries. Where is your husband? He's at home. He's at home. Don't cry. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? Greatland. You see, th these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit. Imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through. Sometimes we take some things for granted. Imagine the advices. Someone now will recommend and say, go to a herbalist. Go and do this. And don't cry, my sister. Two surgeries you went through. My head. Now, I'm seeing something being removed from your stomach. Look at what is happening to her. Yes, she went through two surgeries. in the name of jesus christ i command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you in the name of jesus i set you free now madam i set you free now i'm praying for the rest but i set you free now hold my hands come in the name of jesus I declare supernatural miracle for you now release this woman now as I'm praying for you I'm praying for your husband wherever he is according to the time of life may you return with your miracle children it's over in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God my dear let me why is this woman here you are married to madam no child how long four years and um, five months four years five months where are you coming from jigawa state from jigawa state please come oh dear <laughs> You know why God is dealing with these issues because he has declared that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness is fruitfulness from any dimension any dimension look at this woman look at these women crying I may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in I think is the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family that you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister please don't cry who brought you here you came alone Sarah. Huh? Sarah. oh dear put your hand on your stomach is she a christian she's, she's a christian yes. okay it doesn't matter whether you are a muslim or christian the lord everybody the lord healed in the old testament 
he healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over you just act like this just to show honor and respect people i will pray for you there is a name that is above every other name and in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon your womb and i declare the embargo of barrenness five years barrenness let it be broken right now look at this let it be broken right now i'm seeing something being loose from your stomach this is what i'm seeing and then i'm seeing you coughing you are now beginning to cough this is what i'm seeing i don't know what it is that i'm seeing but i'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing coughing something out in the name of jesus christ let it be gone now let it be gone forever let it be gone forever let it be gone forever my dear put your hand on your stomach what's your name blessing where's your husband he's not here he's not here father in the name of jesus i don't care what the medical report is we agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now i decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we are not praying at random we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasarawa state nasarawa state are you alone no I'm you came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of jesus by the mercy of god let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there freedom now. i'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you're the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed i'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby i will pray for you because if i don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the lord is showing me and i'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam kano kano is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he husband sir please come there's Daddy something the lord wants to do in your family don't worry he's, he's here he's coming thank you sir thank you for coming god bless you i want to pray for you you came from kano too you came from kano too sir i'm going to pray for you thing come out of you opportunity to hand their lives opportunity to hand their lives over you just act like this just to show honor and respect people i will pray for you there is a name that is above every other name and in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon your womb 
and I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness, let it be broken right now. Look at this, let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing, and then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but I'm seeing something come out of you, and you are coughing, coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life, return with your child. Whatever needs to be corrected in this body now, I correct it by the power. Ah, I'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. You will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a, look at what is happening to her. A correction, a correction of whatever is wrong. In the name of Jesus. Why are they here? Fruit of the womb. Uh, we are not praying at random. We'll pray. Madam, I will pray for you. Where are you coming from? Huh? Nasarawa State. Nasarawa State. Are you alone? No, I'm alone. You came with who? Only me. Only you. Come. Just the woman. I will pray for her. We have to pray for the sick. But how many of you have seen what God is doing here? Listen, you see, if you love the Lord and you see God attacking... In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord just showed me something now. I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire. And the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there freedom now. I'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you're the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here, he's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Number one, God is going to give you the fruit of the womb. Number two, God is restoring your finances. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God is restoring your finances. Amen. This is a serious issue. As you are here coming now, the financial trouble you are into is only God that can bring you out. Amen. Is that true? God is going to help you. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, why are they here? Six graduates, no job. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
father by your mercy and by your grace let there be a sign and a wonder in the life of this woman just keep her down in the name of jesus i declare by the power of the holy spirit everything that is wrong be corrected now in the name of jesus sir please can you hold my hands in the name of jesus i speak over your finances there is a grace that can restore and i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ madam let me talk to you and then we'll pray for the sick you are the both of you where are you coming from you are here in zaria yes and you are, yes i know your face six graduates no job yes, sir. including you yes sir come no but there are Can six people yes. but there's no job for yes, them sir. can we agree that god will give them a job yes sir and you too let's pray come hold my hands father in the name of jesus christ there is an anointing that is coming upon you eh? and is for the sake of your family in the name that is above all names i release this grace upon you and i pray let the embargo of joblessness be broken now even on both of you i use you as a point of contact to pray now something is leaving this lady's hand you something is leaving your hand i cost that yoke now in the name of jesus your hand is a symbol of your productivity and i declare in the name of jesus let there be liberty liberty for all of you liberty i open the doors of jobs in jesus name i pray why is he here you are a graduate six from where please from abuja abuja yes you are a school of ministry student madam let me talk to you where are you coming from Nasarawa State. Yes, sir. Are you married? Bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit. The hand of God is coming upon someone. Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous. Please bring the person. Let's save time. Father, I establish this victory over this lady's life. The oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever. Broken now and broken forever ah, we don't have time our time is gone but the lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed i'm seeing this guy carry not you now i'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in kaduna state Hello, Kimatona. Hello, Hello, Kimatona. Hello, I declare that anyone under this grace whose name has been taken for any diabolic activity. I stand by the hand of God. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. 
I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service. The way God is taking us. I want to pray. Shade and doctor, please come. The Lord wants to end an old issue in your family. Please come. This is what the Lord is showing me. This thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60, 70 years. The Lord is opening my eyes to see now. Please, I want to pray for you. Those under the anointing, help me. Please, I'm just using two of you as a point of contact. But I'm seeing a spirit. This is an ancient spirit. The way this thing works is that men rise. The moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing, they must die. This is the spirit I'm seeing. Please listen. I'm not... I'm just using them and I'm ministering the way God is showing me. These are not the only families with this thing, but the Lord is saying I should deal with it now. Provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle, you, no death will touch you. But the moment you touch that bar, you are going down. And the Lord wants to destroy it. Because God is using both of you to start a new program in the family. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. Bring that little girl, as small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of her family. As small as you are seeing this, this little girl. Because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family. And as small as she is, the devil wants to kill her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I use this, my dear daughter, as a point of contact. That everything that is not the planting of God, I scatter it now in the name of Jesus. May God use this, our precious daughter, and truly may she be the deliverer of our family. In the name of Jesus. A lady is going to start running because I'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family. And that spirit is going to start driving her to run away. So I'm telling you in advance, you are going to see the person stand up to start running away. It's, it's not even this lady I'm talking about. This is somebody in the crowd. You will, not even, you will not be in control of yourself. It's a spirit because I'm about to rebuke it right now. Mm. Father, I thank you for the Bonire family and by extension the various families. The altar that sits upon this family. Even the lawful captives came Marato Zakata shall be delivered even the lawful captives i break that yoke now i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood that ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family be broken i open up the door of increase rise to the senate of your profession i forbid the spirit of death once and for all moment in a twinkling of an eye an issue that is age long let me tell you this a mighty deliverance has happened to this family this thing i'm telling you fought their grandparents fought their parents and if not delivered now will still fight them If there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family, you rise to a position and crash down. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, let fire land upon such individuals. 
and scatter that altar, scatter that altar forever in the name of Jesus Christ. It took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble. Now I declare to you, a new order starts in your lineage. A new order starts in your family. Where children live long and they become successful and that every embargo of witchcraft once and for all is broken in the name of Jesus. Madam, I can pray for you now. Just, just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa yes, State. Yes, Where yes. are you from? Ebony State. Ebony State. Ebony State. I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you. Yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where is your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up. Stand up. Please stand up. Stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus here, sir. You are from campus here? Yes, sir. What do you do? I'm a lecturer. You are a lecturer? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Ah. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man. But there, you are intelligent. I don't know you, all, but you are a brilliant man. It even took grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, sir. It's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, you were too exceptional. Yes, sir. And you are supposed to be abroad now. I don't know what has kept you down. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be here. But somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about? That you carry a man's destiny. See, let me say it. I'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of Jesus, whatever belongs to you and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men, it must be released this night. It must be released this night. Sir, please stand up. What's your department? Political science, sir. Political science, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. You will know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen. What do you do, my dear? I'm not doing anything. You are not doing anything? No, sir. Ah, I have to pray for you. Yes, sir. Ah, that trip abroad, you must go. Amen. Amen. Because there is an honor and there is a professor that God has destined that you will meet. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I release you. And I release your destiny. Amen. Both for you and your wife. Amen. I decree and declare. Scale new heights in your profession. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. There is a friend in your life. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to be careful. There is a friend in your life. Be careful. I won't say more than that. Be careful. What God has joined, let no man put asunder. I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Locos. Huh? Locos. From Joss. Not state of origin, where you came from, that you left it and came. Huh? I want to pray for you. What do you do? I, I, I'm a secretary. You are what? I'm a secretary. You are a secretary? Yes, sir. Come, let me pray for you. One of these days, we'll just trust God and do a night vigil, honestly, so that we can deal with this issue seriously. You may think that time is being wasted until you see what God is turning around in your life. All these people came from Joss? Madam, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will not have, what they call that pregnancy? 
that they have to do um, no bridge is bridge or something like that this is what i'm saying hold on let me pray for you come you are sick it looks like pregnancy like it's breached this is what i'm saying the pregnancy that looks like it's, that will open you up and carry something out where are you coming from joss oh, what did they say is wrong with you um, multiple fibers. no a man don't feel embarrassed can i talk to you a man used to come in a dream huh yes, and sleep with you yes, is that true yes, that's what brought this pregnancy I'm a man of God. Don't be af afraid. You, you heard the story I told you now. Yes, sir. Madam, if I'm lying, look at me before the whole world and say I'm a liar. That you go to bed and a man comes and all of a sudden this started coming. Of course, medically, you would think that, okay, you check it. There is nothing there. Yet the pregnancy will not go. How long has this thing been? Three years. Three years. Don't cry. Don't cry. Who did you come with? May this place remain a place of solutions. Was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically? and had strange go and listen to my teaching the mystery of the serpent and the woman my sister can i pray for you you believe in jesus look at this adorable lady look at imagine a woman carrying this for three years is that pregnancy a, does a human being stay three years in the stomach are you married of course imagine what this this means to her marital life. Put your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at this. Look at what is happening to the woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by God, let it be uprooted in this body. Is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father, it must be uprooted? I uproot this right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot this right now. In the name of Jesus. By a strange mystery, may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just keep her down there. Madam, let me pray for you. What do you want the Lord to do for you? I'm believing him for a life partner. Life partner. Do you believe God can give you a life partner? Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. You are born again. Yes, Father, the Bible says male and female, he created them. She's not embarrassed. She's standing sincerely and telling you that I came so that God will bless me with a life partner. I lay my hands upon you and I decree and declare may god bring a responsible man to your life Amen. you will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow Amen. in the name of jesus christ i declare it so and for all these people standing i pray for them may the lord himself bring miracles over their life Amen. in jesus name i pray i may not have time to minister to all of you one by one please forgive me huh coincidentally i'm going to just tomorrow I'll be in just Saturday, Sunday. I'm ministering in a conference. I'm excited. I'll be in House on the Rock at Rayfield, Saturday and Sunday. I'm in just. But let me pray for you, all of you who came all the way. My dear, look at me. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. With all your heart? Yes, sir. I drive the boy that the devil wants to bring to your life. Say amen. Amen! You, you may not understand what I'm saying, but let me repeat myself. I drive, I didn't say God drove him, in the name of Jesus Christ, as one who loves you, eh? I drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life. Amen! 
in the name of Jesus. I'm not looking down. It is God's will that all men be saved. But then I'm telling you that in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that would destroy your destiny, let it be far from you. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. For all of you, I may not know why you came, but let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimony. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name, just believe what I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. God bless you. Please go back to your seat, my God. Can we still pray for the sick? How many of you are trusting God for healing? Let me see your hands. Oh dear. Okay, this is what is going to happen. It's okay, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. you. You came, you brought them. Okay, I'm going to pray for you now. You just relax. Now, please, because of time, those under the anointing, just leave them if there's no... Osha, hold on. A lady Osha, place your hand on that girl. Any lady Osha. Release her now. Out! In the name of Jesus. Let it come to an end now and forever. Release her destiny. Release her family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be restoration. And let there be testimonies. Please, this is how we are going to do it. Because our time is already gone. We are going to do three things at the same time. Please listen. Number one, you are going to be submitting your prayer requests. Number two, those who are trusting God for healing in the various overflows. Please, aside from those that I prayed for, for barrenness, if your reason of coming here is barrenness, whether you are in overflow one, two, or three, I want you to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you myself. Aside from that, please, you are trusting God for a healing miracle. I want you to move to your various overflows. So those at overflow one, move to the front of your projector stand. Overflow two, the same thing. Overflow three, the same thing. Those by the roadside, the roadside down to second equa. Join overflow two. You can join overflow two, please. Usher's protocol PR department, coordinate yourself to help them, please. So that the people know what they are doing. Praise the Lord. Those in here, you can come. You can come. The Lord bless you. Now, there are going to be men and women of God scattered across these various places who are ministering under a corporate anointing. Make sure you are standing for healing, please. Make sure you are standing for healing. No, no, no. Those for fruit of the womb, come in, please. The main auditorium. I want to lay hands on you by myself. It doesn't matter what overflow you are. If it is fruit of the womb, please come. The main auditorium. I want to pray for you. Now, please listen. Just a touch is enough. You don't have to start explaining and telling the men of God this is a problem. Sometimes God can give them words. If they don't, don't worry. Just a touch and you will go back. I want you to believe this. That's why you came. Are we together? While that is happening, if you have your prayer request here, you can just wave it and pass it. Let there be an usher. Okay, um, peace is here. You can pass it. Let there be an usher or somebody. Please, um, the various departments, coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this. Let's make it fast. Those online, um, you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests. And we're going to pray on it right now. Please, quickly, quickly. A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. A Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. Um, Pastor Alpha and Benga will go to overflow three. Overflow three. Pastor Femi and Kenny. And Ima, go to overflow two. Also extend to those by the roadside. 
extend to those by the roadside. Did you get? Let me pray for you, Pastor Lawrence. Come. I will pray for you and then you will join those at Overflow 3. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the anointing, let the grace of the Spirit come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, worship team, you give us songs of the Spirit while we are ministering. And as soon as hands are laid on you, you can go back rejoicing. Those who are seated, don't be careless, be praying in the Spirit. Because God is solving people's problems. While you gather the prayer requests, if you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and there will be someone to reach you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will fall under the anointing here. Once that happens, the power of God will start move to heal. Right here, those in front here. Okay, so I can start praying now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Praise the Lord. Please, everyone stand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Whether you are inside or outside, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please, begin to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here, that by the grace of God, this will be the last time you have to visit this issue. Please pray. Please pray. Our time is gone, but let's make use of the time. stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God every request that I've written here by the God of heaven let this be the last time 
May the Lord arise and solve impossible situations. Arise in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Father, that these Egyptians that I see today, I see them no more forever. The requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms, we declare intervention, we declare breakthrough, we declare increase. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare and we agree as a family of faith that this request will turn into testimonies in your life. We declare that this request turn into supernatural testimonies. The same way I am standing upon them, I decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that they are still praying for a few people, but let me just pray the final prophetic blessing on you because our time is gone. It says, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I decree and declare, every economic hardship that is bringing the saints to their knees and causing them to compromise, I declare that you are exempted from it now. Every prayerlessness represented in this place that the grace to pray seems to have gone down in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you I sever you from them right now in Jesus' name. I speak favor over your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus, walk in favor. 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 In favor. In favor. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.